young people who are joining the workforce is number one, be yourself. Being your authentic self is the best thing that you can do for yourself, your family and for the world. We all are born with our own unique gifts that we bring to the world and the best potential that we can reach is when we leverage that uniqueness. We at Unilever Sri Lanka take the agenda of equity, diversity and inclusion very seriously. We have been working very hard to put in place enablers to support women to advance their careers at the workplace. And I would say we do this through three pillars. The first of more representation, the second more development and the third more inclusion. What I mean by more representation is making sure enough women join the workforce. And yes, that means sometimes setting targets for ourselves, but it never is at the expense of merit. What we do is when we're hiring for an open position, we make sure that the hiring manager gets a balanced slate of resumes, which means five female and five male resumes in a total of 10 resumes. And then may the best man or woman win. At Unilever Sri Lanka, we have 55% of our top management or management committee as women. Our chairperson is a woman. In the past few years, we've reached many milestones, like making sure we hire the first area sales manager on the front line, hiring the first factory manager uh, who's a woman. And also another big milestone that makes me so proud is hiring women on the factory shop floor for the first time ever. We hired 25 women to join our factory uh, and they're doing really well. When I say more development, I mean more development on the job, more development through mentors and coaches, and more development through support networks. We make sure we give women big jobs early on, just as we do for men, and we assign them strong male and women mentors to support their growth journey. We have also launched something called Womankind, which is an all women's network around the globe of senior leaders to support each other. And this year, we also launched Womankind in South Asia, where all the women leaders in South Asia came together to talk about things that matter to them. And I personally am part of that network and felt really good to be part of that conversation. And what I mean by more inclusion is hard wiring that culture of inclusion through policies. I truly believe, you know, we can't just talk about inclusion as a big fluffy word. It has to be hardwired into the organization through policies and practices. So we at Unilever Sri Lanka, you know, of course we have policies like maternity leave of six months, paternity leave this year, we extended it to six weeks. We have a crash in the workplace so that, you know, parents can have a balanced time uh, with their work and life. We have all of that, but also, We've launched some very iconic industry-first policies. For example, in the past just a couple of years, we launched a domestic violence support policy to support victims of domestic abuse. We launched a menstrual leave policy. Who doesn't have a hard time on the day one of their period? We launched a policy to support women to take a day off on the first day of their period. We launched a fertility cover policy to support uh, women and men to go on that journey of parenthood. So we do a lot of this stuff to hardwire inclusion through policies in our organization. And so that's more representation, more development and more inclusion. I feel like I myself have a lot to learn before I can dish out advice, but let me give it a shot. I think the first piece of advice that I would give to young people who are joining the workforce is number one, be yourself. Being your authentic self is the best thing that you can do for yourself, your family and for the world. We all are born with our own unique gifts that we bring to the world and the best potential that we can reach is when we leverage that uniqueness. So my first piece of advice would be to be yourself. My second piece of advice would be something that's very close to my heart and actually links very closely to my own purpose is to build a strong foundation of health. You know, you can be ambitious. Take an example of an athlete. You can be ambitious as an athlete wanting to perform to your best, but if you don't invest in your daily rituals to keep your physical, mental, emotional and spiritual health strong, you can never win. And so my second piece of advice is to really make sure you're prioritizing your health on a daily basis. I personally am very passionate about having a strong morning routine. And I read this somewhere, uh, it's called the 4M model in which every morning you do uh, movement, 
meditation, mantra, which is any kind of sound, and mindset, which is either making a to-do list or an intention list. So whatever be your ritual, set those to set the strong foundation of health. My third and last piece of advice would be to always be able to tell yourself that my best is yet to come. I truly believe that we as human beings are wired to evolve and grow. And only when we have that mindset of I can grow more, I can do better, can we become the best versions of ourselves. The progress of any organization is limited when they allow for gender stereotyping and an unconscious bias to set in. And they don't explore the optimum opportunity of their labor force. In my experience, uh, breaking that barrier and creating an atmosphere where women are able to explore into these non-traditional roles unlocks a capacity of a very different nature. To do this, I think first you need to create an environment where women believe that they can and they should explore into these non-traditional or gender stereotype roles like sales or uh, factory and engineering. I can personally vouch and we create an atmosphere where we have these female uh, role models who can vouch uh, for the difference and the impact that exploring into these roles can have on their careers. I can assure any woman who is considering this and is at that point that it will add to your skills and competencies, it will give you opportunity in leadership, and most of all, it will give you progression. And um, I stand as a testament for how it has impacted me both in a very junior um, part of my career as well as a senior part, because I've spent one third, almost one third of my career uh, in a stereotypical male-dominated uh, function, which is sales. And we're really happy that we've been able to create that atmosphere that we can encourage more and more game-changer women, uh, such as this in Unilever. This encouraging uh, of women to explore their career beyond is one critical aspect. The second is that the organization needs to create an equitable workspace which encourages women to um, break the barrier into these non-traditional roles. Whether it's in the policies or whether it's in creating a culture which encourages women to speak up or investing in, in talent and in training to break that unconscious bias. At Unilever, we've been uh, privileged to have these policies, culture and procedures uh, implemented, which we believe is the reason why women uh, have been able to break the barriers into these non-traditional uh, roles. And I believe that any organization that is committed and is wanting to do uh, should uh, exploit in these aspects of policy, structure and culture and they will unlock uh, an amazing amount of capacity and build a progression for their organization through unlocking the barriers for women. Unilever has been committed to uh, empower women beyond our organization and, that, and we've been so for a very long time. And I think what's really valuable is the approach that we take. Um, firstly, it is from a perspective of creating structural interventions. To give you an example, uh, Project Lia Shakti, which we launched uh, in response to this economic crisis right now, uh, where we partnered with the Women's Bureau to empower and enable women who are leading households, particularly maybe women who've been faced with gender violence. Here we provide the structural support by giving them products in the form of working capital, which will then enable them to start a business, while also giving them the skills, the competency to, uh, to succeed and thrive and build a livelihood out of it. Secondly, we also believe that it needs to be a project or an initiative that is sustained and sustainable over a longer period of time. There's no better example to give you than Project Saubagya, which we have been committed for almost 20 years now, uh, and it reaches uh, rural women with a footprint of about 3,000 women. Uh, we've done this in partnership with um, Samurdi Initiative, and again here we give that structural support 
over the, uh, the 20 years where we give them the initial seed capital or enable them to have the seed capital and the structural support, knowledge and competency to continue and thrive and build a livelihood that can sustain their families. Finally, I think the approach that we have to empowering women uh, beyond our organization is that it needs to be impactful. And the example I can give you here is uh, the Glow and Lovely Career Foundation, which impacts girls and young Young girls and women at a very crucial juncture where they are uh, deciding and building the aspiration for the careers that they should have. Uh, we believe that investing in that moment which builds their financial security is a very critical one. Through the foundation, we have a website uh, which today um, forms as a testament because we impact almost 25,000 uh, girls and women who subscribe to this website. And we offer training and skills um, which build their aspiration to different industries and give them that early start, uh, whether it's building your CV or preparing for an interview, uh, to excel and build their career. So these are just a few examples of how we empower women beyond just our organizational ecosystem. Equity for me is creating a fairness in the game by um, ensuring that every player is given a customized solution that gives them an opportunity to win or succeed. To me, equity is understanding that not everybody around the world has an inclusive ecosystem and therefore we need to create a level playing field for everyone to be able to thrive to their fullest.